Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some small town romance recommendations. I have previously made another small town romance rec video so I will link part one down below if you want 10 more recommendations. Like many people in romance book world today, I love a good small town romance but I will say as someone who lives in a small town like they're kind of far-fetched. Like <laughs> they're very different than what is actually like to live in a small town. I kind of suspend my disbelief when I read these books, but it's fine. We're fine. Um, so let's get into these small town romances. The first one that I have is a recent read of mine that I absolutely adored. This is Rain Me In by Kayla Gross or Grossi. I don't really know how to pronounce her name. I'm gonna have to look that up, but this is a cowboy small town romance. Our heroine here, her name is Blake, and she is returning back to her small town after five years. Five years ago, her brother ended up passing away and she hasn't really been back since, but her mother was in an accident recently and her leg is in a boot. And so she's gonna move back in with her parents to help take care of her mother, as well as take care of the farm that they run. She just expected to stay at home for a few months and to help take care of her mother. What she didn't expect was to go to like the country Western dancing bar in town and get basically forced to ride the mechanical bull. And she gets persuaded by her brother's best friend. His name is Gavin and yeah, he was Blake's brother's best friend growing up. And so growing up, <laughs> Gavin always had a huge crush on Blake, but Blake is a few years older than him. And so he never thought he had any shot with her. So when he sees her at the bar that he works at, he's like, I gotta get this girl. This girl's gonna be mine. So. Um, he kind of convinces her to ride the bull, but then she gets kind of pissed at him and um, they don't really get off on the right foot from the start, but then he comes back to kind of grovel and realize like, I should have gone around this a different way. And thus starts their a very interesting romance. Gavin and Blake both have recent family members who have passed. I believe uh, Gavin's father or mother, I think mother recently passed and um, Blake, obviously her brother passed five years ago and they're still heavily dealing with that grief. Um, so be aware that that is present in the book. The small town feel of this book was whew, top notch. The community in this small town because um, Gavin and his family is going through a very hard time recently when it comes to financial reasons. And the town, like all of them pitch in, they put on a charity, like they really want to help each other grow in this town. But there's a reason why I gave this book five stars and it's like top five of the year for me. I love this. If you need a good cowboy romance, like look no further. Next, I have Juniper Hill by Daphne Perry. This is the second book in her Edens series. Um, this is the only book I've read by Daphne Perry and it will not be my last. I really, really, really enjoyed this one. This is a single mom romance. The small town in question is Quincy, which I believe is a small town in Montana, possibly. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and our heroine in here, the single mom is Memphis and she ends up moving to Quincy with her just a few month old son, Drake. She really wants to move to this small town and just have a better life for her and her son. She ends up getting a job at the, I think it's called the Eloise Inn in this small town. And she does not expect to have to deal with her grumpy landlord of sorts. Uh, she's renting out an apartment above this guy's garage. And um, he is grumpy to say the least. <laughs> his name is Knox and his family owns the Eloise Inn. He's actually the chef in the inn as well. He at first isn't too happy about this stunning woman and her very adorable son moving in to his place because he has his own past issues with women. Um, but then one night he goes to help Memphis in the apartment because Drake is up all night crying. He's a colicky baby and things just turn from that point. I love babies and romances. I love small town romances. I feel like this was just a recipe for an amazing time for me. I really enjoyed this book. Again, you have a great small town feel of like everyone pitching in to help one another, especially this family. This family, I can't wait to read the other books in this series with the family as other main characters um, because they just, loved this town and they loved the inn like it was super sweet next i have a whole series for you if you want a whole series you definitely should check out the tattered and torn series by katherine cowles so there are five books in this series and it is complete katherine cowles is kind of the queen of writing small town suspense 
uh, romance books. Um, I'm not really a fan of suspense romances, but I feel like Catherine Cowles did a great job with this series. Um, and I'm a very harsh critic when it comes to suspenseful romances, so take with that what you will. All takes place in a town called Wolf Gap. Like it's a small town called Wolf Gap. So that's where this whole series takes place. Um, so Tattered Stars, our heroine in here, her father, abducted this little girl when our heroine was a child and she ended up riding her horse to the police station to rescue the girl and ever since then her father has been put in jail and her family has ostracized her but then she inherits her family home from her mother um and she ends up moving back to wolf gap and the brother of the little girl that was kidnapped is not very happy about her moving back to this town because he just doesn't want to think about her family because of what her dad did. Then the next book in the series is Falling Embers, which is a brother's best friend, but also friends to lovers because they're friends themselves. Um, the hero in here is a single dad to, I believe, twin girls who are around the age of seven, five, I can't remember. This is his romance with his best friend's younger sister, but they're also friends. And she's into like extreme sports and stuff like that. Hidden Waters is book three and it's probably my favorite in the series. Our heroine in here is the sister, not sister, I'm sorry, cousin to the girl from book one. So she also grew up in the same cult that this girl grew up in. So she leaves that life and she ends up becoming roommates with um, I think her cousin's like brother-in-law or something. Um, and they're like roommates and he's very gentle and sweet with her. Like this one is beautiful. Shattered Sea is book four. A heroine here, Lakin, it deals with chronic pain and she works at the small town's uh, local gallery. And one day this guy is walking by and sees a photograph in the window and just like needs to have it. It turns out that's our hero. And he is staying in Wolf Gap for a short time to research a movie that he is going to be a part of. He is actually an actor. And the last book in the series is Fractured Sky, um, which is another favorite. Our heroine in here is the little girl that was kidnapped in book one, all grown up. And this is her romance with kind of like the town recluse, Ramsey, who owns a ranch and uh, trains horses that have been abused. And he is a very, very, very grumpy. I really enjoyed this series. I just went to Book Bonanza and like got my series collection completed. So I'm very happy to have all these books now. Um, but I really enjoyed this series. If you want a good solid small town romance series, you should definitely check this series out. Another series that I recommend is the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. Um, I more so recommend books two and three, which are Heartless and Powerless. Flawless sometimes take place in this small town, but not as much as Heartless and Powerless. Heartless is a nanny romance between Cade and Willa. Cade and his siblings live in Chestnut Springs, which is this small town, and he is in need of a nanny to his five-year-old son, and to Willa, who is chaotic to say the least. They have very different personalities. Uh, Cade is more grumpy and stoic, whereas Willa is more carefree. And oh, romance probably top three favorite books of the year, love this one. And then Powerless is a friends to lovers romance. Our heroine in here is like arranged to marry this guy to like form a family alliance for business reasons, but she ends up becoming like a runaway bride with her best friend. And he just happens to be a hockey player and has been in love with her for a while. So both of these books primarily take place in Chestnut Springs. Book one, Flawless, also takes place in Chestnut Springs, um, but you have a lot of traveling in that one to bigger cities because the hero in that one's like a bull rider, a professional bull rider. So they do go to a lot of larger towns. Book two and book three more so have the small town feel in my opinion. And then I haven't read book four yet, so I don't know what the vibe is for that one. Let me know down below if that also is small town vibes. Next is Like You Love Me by Adriana Locke. This is a friends to lovers marriage of convenience romance. Holden and Sophie in here, they grew up together and they are friends, but Holden comes back to the small town that Sophie lives in. Sophie owns an inn in the small town. And uh, Holden moves back to help his grandfather. His grandfather thinks he's going on vacation and he owns the local vet place and so, the hero in here, Holden's also a vet. Um, so he's like, okay, grandpa, go take a vacation. I will run the veterinary clinic for you while you're gone. But they both have things they're struggling with and reasons why they need to get in marriage of convenience. It sounds a little bizarre to them at first, but uh, they go through with it. They get married for their own reasons. I think Sophie, it needs more money. She needs more financial stability for her in or she's gonna lose it. And then Holden, it needs to be more of a family man to 
this uh, job opportunity that is out there for him. That's like his dream job. They obviously did not expect feelings to blossom between the two of them. They're just friends. They grew up together. Um, but once they're married, they're forced into these situations they never really thought they would have to be in and they end up developing feelings for each other. This one was super cute and very underrated if you want a underrated small town romance. Next, I have Work For It by Talia Hibbert. Yes, Talia Hibbert has written a small town romance. I feel like a lot of her books, if not all of her books besides this one, takes place in a major city. This is the romance between Griffin and Keynes. You've met Keynes like in the previous books in the series, um, but Keynes is going through some stuff. He is not doing great. So he's like, I need to just forget the world and go to the middle of nowhere and forget my troubles. So he ends up in this small town. I don't know what the name of the small town is, um, but he goes to this village to kind of like feel free and ends up wanting to like locally work at the like orchard nearby. And there he meets Griffin, but he actually met Griffin a few days before at a bar and they had this hot and heavy time together in the back alley, but it kind of triggered Keynes in a way he never thought possible. And so he ended up voicing his frustrations out on Griffin instead, this big burly giant of a man. And so they don't really end up on the right foot. Okay, when they start working together. But the two of them are so stinking cute, especially Griffin. Like Griffin, oh, he's such a gentle giant and he makes these delicious treats for the orchard too. I love him so much. And the way that he and Keynes like grew together, these two characters were super vulnerable with one another. I will say the small town aspect in here wasn't my favorite because this is the small town where you have like a lot of judgy people um, because Griffin grew up in this small town and his mother ended up committing suicide and his fellow neighbors end up judging him hardcore about it and have all these rumors about him and his family. But the good people in the town do make themselves known. So just be aware of that. Next one that I have is Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. You wouldn't think that this is a small town romance. I don't think people know this, but it is. I heard in here, Delilah ended up growing up in this small town and was ostracized by a lot of people in the town because of the way she acted and the way she looked and her independence. She's now all grown up. I think she lives in New York City and she is quite an up and coming photographer. Um, and she ends up getting hired to work at as a photographer for her stepsister's wedding. She doesn't really get along with her stepsister, um, but she's gonna do it anyway. When she comes back into town, she bumps into her stepsister's best friend, Claire. And from the moment they glimpse eyes, once again, all these years later, um, they cannot stop thinking about each other and it's so stinking cute. But there are a few things that um, are in the way of them being together, a little, a few roadblocks, if you will. Um, so it was highly entertaining and uh, I stinking love this book. Like it's it's a little thick, but like the audiobook is totally worth it. Um, and again, you have those small town characters um, that are quite judgy, but again, good apples of the town end up making themselves known in the best way possible. Lastly, I have two Brittany Cherry books. Um, Brittany Cherry writes a lot of small town romance and I think she does it really well. So the first one is Disgrace, which unfortunately is another small town romance where like, I wanted to like beat the crap out of these people in this town because they were so stinking mean. Um, but the small town feel and environment that these two characters were living through, like I loved that. The people in this book though, could suck it. This is one of those small towns that is very church centric and our heroine and Grace in here grew up kind of as like the town princess because her dad was the preacher of this very church centric town. Uh, but she's not coming back to her small town for a family visit. Her husband ended up cheating on her and she has literally nowhere else to go. And she ends up learning that the town bad boy Jackson is the only person in the entire time town that tells it to her straight and makes her feel alive. The two of them end up using each other as an escape of sorts, but then real feelings start developing between the two of them. And then what happens when the very small town, the judgy small town and Grace's family find out about their relationship? They are not on board because they think Jackson is a big no, no. Again, I wasn't a big fan of the small town drama, but it's fine. It's fine. And then the last book that I'm gonna talk about today is Southern Storms. This is about Kennedy and Jax. Kennedy has been going through quite a few things, difficult things, and she ends up turning to her estranged sister who welcomes her with open arms. Um, but the only issue is like her sister is about to leave on her honeymoon and she can't really like 
be there for her sister, even though she's like, I get to go for my honeymoon. Kennedy's like, no, 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 go have fun with your husband. Just leave me here. It'll be fine. So she ends up staying at one of her sister's like properties. I think they are like house flippers and she ends up staying at one of her properties in this very small town while she's away. The town is called Haven Barrow. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? And um, she ends up exploring the like property she's on and she finds this bench and around the bench, I think are daisies, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and she ends up sitting on the bench, um, but then this gruff man goes and shoots her off the bench being like, you're on private property. You do not go on my property. This is my bench, like no. She's put off by this very rude man, um, but then they realize that they've known each other. His name is Jax. And growing up, they went to summer camp together. Um, so it's been years since they've known each other. They've known each other when they were kids, not present day when they're adults. And so it's quite a big shock when they realize, oh my gosh, you're my childhood best friend. Jax is going through his own struggles and he doesn't need a woman in his life to make his life even more complicated. So he's trying to keep his distance. But then when he realizes who Kennedy is, like all bets are off. He's like, I can't believe I finally found my best friend again. I loved the small town atmosphere in here. I thought it was great. Anyways, there you have it. Those were some small town romance recommendations for you. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a tree emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.